receiving divine authority, Imam at the age of nine, Imam Muhammad Al Jawad was born on the tenth of Rajab, which marks today. So for this reason, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless you on this auspicious occasion and grant all your wishes, the lovers of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode where we have dedicated this program to share and discuss and and. Uh, examine the life of Imam Muhammad al-Jawad, the ninth infallible, eleventh uh, infallible, the ninth Imam of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And I am also uh, once again honored to host this program with my dear guest, Sayyid Ja'far al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you very much for having me. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Habibi Sayyidina, just to recap from yesterday, we did discuss uh, that the circumstances that brought Imam alayhi salam to uh, to receive the imama uh, divine authority over uh, all universes at the age of nine we provided evidences of uh, how did the imam come uh, to be the imam of, of his time at such a young age uh, we also brought examples from the life of imam uh, muhammad al-jawad but yesterday we left off um, at a very crucial and important uh, matter which is the marriage of uh, imam muhammad al-jawad uh, we know that Al Ma'moon tried to use his power and wealth to influence the Imam in, in any means, in any matter. Uh, we can say that this is one of the motives that motivated Al Ma'moon to marry off his daughter to Imam Muhammad Al Jawad. Another reason that, um, that I have concluded from my research uh, and uh, other statistics, uh, scholars say that his main purpose uh, was to, he knew. And as we mentioned in the previous episode, um, Al Ma'moon was somewhat the most uh, knowledgeable um, ruler from the Abbasid caliphs. Um, so he knew that there, were, there was going to be a 12th Imam who was going to bring justice to the whole world. Um, and he wanted that Imam, that individual, to be from <coughs> his lineage. So scholars have concluded that this may be the reason why Al Ma'moon married off his daughter to Imam Muhammad al Jawad. Are there any other reasons? Uh, that would make Al Ma'moon uh, or motivate Al Ma'moon to make this very uh, important decision. I mean, to marry off your daughter to an enemy, considered as Ahl al-Bayt enemies uh, to Al Abbasids. Um, and why is it that Imam Al Jawad got married at the age of eight? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ahli baytihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ahli Muhammad. Thank you very much, Brother Ahmed, for having me. Thank you very much. Going back to your question, first we need to examine the personality of Al-Ma'moon. Yes. Al-Ma'moon is the Khalifa of Bani al-Abbas, was unlike other Khulafa and kings of Bin al-Abbas, his predecessors and his successors. There are certain qualities for al mamun Number one, by theory, theoretically, he was close to the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, meaning close to be a Shia, as opposed to be on the other side of the aisle. When you look at the Khulafa of Bin al-Abbas, although they descended from Hashim and they're considered to be Bani Hashim, but their ideology was different than Ahlul Bayt Because if it were the same, then people would tell them, then what is your position to be at the helm of power? You should leave that to Ahlul Bayt. Therefore, they immune themselves to take the opposite ideology to, to the Imam to, to, to secure their yes. positions. Therefore, you will see um, uh, Harun, for example, Harun was even hostile to Ahl al-Bayt to the point that he became Nasabi. There is a narration that there used to be a cedar tree where Bab al-Sidra right now in the Haram of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. That was cedar tree. The Prophet, peace be upon him, at the very beginning, you know, at the time of the Prophet, yes. he said, Allah qata al-Sidra. Wow. The one who cut the, cut off the Cedar tree. People at that time were ob oblivious. They had no idea what the Prophet was talking about until they realized years and, and centuries after, basically 
about 108 years, 185 years of Al Hijra, when the tomb of Imam Hussein was here, and people would use the cedar tree as a, as, a, as, a, as a sign, as a signpost for the, for the tomb of Imam Hussein. Harun cut off that, that tree to make the pilgrims, you know, lost, l lose their sight and lose their targets. For example, Al Mutawakkil Al Abbasi. Many times he demolished the tomb of Al Imam Al Hussein. Was a Nasibi, was hostile to Ahl al Bayt. Unlike Al Ma'mun. Al Ma'mun, apparently in, in, in facade, in apparent, he was very close to Ahl al Bayt. Anyone who would say ill about Ali ibn Abi Talib or his progeny, he would be in trouble in front of Ma'mun. And he was taking their ideology. At the same time, he was fearing for his own post, yes. for, his, for, for his own position. And he knew that Ahl al-Bayt would put a strong challenge, very serious challenge to his authority. Therefore, therefore, he feared them. That's quality number one. Quality number two, he was very shrewd and intelligent. When his father Harun passed away, the Khilafah was, was distributed between him and his older brother, Amin. Amin. Very shrewdly, very intelligently, he turned the table against Bani al-Abbas, who the majority stood with his brother, Al-Amin. And then w through war and battle, he killed his brother his and he brother. became the Khalifa. And he took the right. Number three, he was pro-knowledge, pro-wisdom and science, as we have said in the, in the past and last night. These qualities have made him think and think wisely. Number one, through the, well, I, here I'm looking at it through a political perspective. What you have said, that he knew that the 12th Imam will come from Al-Imam Al-Jawad eventually, and he will be the leader, he will be the Messiah, the Al-Mahdi. So what's better than having him to be the, the grandfather from the maternal definitely. side yeah. than, than be an enemy. Yeah. Therefore, definitely he wanted to, to, to push for, for, for that uh, in conclusion, mm -hmm. that maybe the son will, will come from, from, uh, from his, his daughter. Wow. Uh, th that's number one. But from a political perspective, at the beginning, Al Mamun, when he had a fighting with Al Amin, and most of Bani Al Abbas sided with his brother, his ground was shaky, yeah. unstable. It wasn't stable. Therefore, he wanted to resort to something that brings legitimacy to himself, and people would look at him as a legitimate Khalifa. Therefore, he brought Al Imam Al Rida yes. and made him the crown prince. Why? So he can appease the public the masses of people, when the masses of people see someone in the position, in the stature of Al Imam al Rada is the crown prince, then they would consider that this government is legitimate and there is no need to fight against it. This is number one. Second, there was a revolution by a man, by a commander, a military commander called Abu Saraya. Abu Saraya, again, apparently was a Shia, although he has his own you know, vested motives and, 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 and um, you know, uh, interest that, that he was seeking. His, his rhetoric, his emblem, was seeking vengeance for Ahl al-Bayt, oh. Whoever who has done wrong against Ahl al-Bayt, he wanted to seek vengeance for against him. That has attracted numerous followers of Ahl al-Bayt. Some of them even were descendants were children of Imam Musa al kalam yes. from other branches, mm -hmm. the cousins of Imam al jawad who have, you know, enrolled themselves, became ranks and files of this army to fight al mamun Therefore, al mamun thought, with a single stone, he can, you know, hit repeated targets. So he found the best solution. N number one, he shows the Shia, the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, that he's a pro Ahl al Bayt. Mm -hmm. Second, in his thought, that he will build a legacy for himself when the, when the Imam al Mahdi salam, is born, then he can claim that he was he's the maternal grandfather lineage, yes. of that person. And third, 
he appeases and subsides the revolution and find legitimacy and farther governing. Yes. Those were in his mind. Therefore, when he looked at the Imam at a relatively young age, by the way, Ahl al-Bayt people would never look at, look at them as children or adults. I will give you a few examples. The first one who became Muslim after the Prophet, who was that person? Abu Talib. The first one who became Muslim, declared Islam was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abu Talib so yes. At what age? At 10 years old. 10 years old. 10 years old, in the eyes of public, is considered to be a child. Yes. Is not mature enough to accept the Risala. Yet, the Prophet, peace be upon him, it only Ali ibn Abi Talib was invited to Islam. He, he only invited Ali ibn Abi Talib for Islam right away. And right away, Ali ibn Abi Talib accepted this invitation and declared you know, his Islam. This is according to all the scholars. Before the elders of the ones who... Before anyone else. Yes. No other person had become Muslim prior to Ali ibn Abi Talib at age of 10. But history doesn't tell us that the Prophet has invited others no. who at the same age of Ali ibn Abi Talib for Islam. He would wait for them until they grow up, they reach the age of maturi maturity, then he will invite them. Again, the Prophet, when he asked Bay'ah, Pledge of Allegiance, Muslims in, in, in Bay'at al-Radwan, that is narrated in the Holy Quran, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذْ يُبَايُعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Included in those were Hassan and Hussein. At what age? Five and six years Five old, six or six and seven. seven years old. At a very, very young age. No other child of Muslims have a pledge allegiance or gave bay'ah to the Prophet, peace be upon him, except Hassan and Hussein. Even the Prophet, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indicates in the Holy Quran that those children the children of, of, of Ahl al-Bayt are totally different from the rest of the, of the humanity. How? Definitely. When you look at Surah Al-Insan. Yes. This story of when, 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 the, when Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima al-Zahra and Hassan and Hussein were fasting and they were giving off their, their, food their food to the beggar, to the orphan, to the captive. Three days. All narrators say that Hassan and Hussein observed fasting. At what age? Five, six, seven years old. While fasting becomes mandatory at what age? Fourteen or nine. At, 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 at age of period. maturity. Yeah, yeah. So these are indications by the Almighty, by the Prophet, mm -hmm. by Amir al muminin and the rest, yes. that the children of Ahl al-Bayt, the Imams, are totally different from the, the rest of the children. Yeah. Therefore, Al-Ma'moon knew this fact yeah. that Al-Imam Al-Jawad is no child, although his age is very young. Yet, he's, he, he, he's very mature and his intelligence supersedes any other mm -hmm. scholar and, and scientist at the time. Yes. Therefore, he offered him his, his, his daughter. daughter. I mean, just, just to add upon that point, I mean, Al-Ma'moon did know that this person is infallible and uh, cannot be influenced yet he still tried to influence him with power you know being the son-in-law of, of the ruler is, is not something you know normal you know people are now when, when you're the son-in-law of, of a president that's something huge so he tried to use power to bring him close to him and influence him that didn't work he tried using wealth as you mentioned in the previous episode giving him a that thousand gold well. dinars uh, you know, it's it's a lot, yet that still didn't work. So the final would be, you know, you know, just kill him off. But yet, that that's that's a different topic. But Sayyidina, inshallah, we're gonna go into a short break uh, and come back to the discussion. But uh, respected viewers, uh, stay tuned because we're gonna, we're gonna jump generations after discussing the issues of youth present in in, in our times and relating it to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and how can they provide us solutions to our youth problems uh, currently. So that will be after the break, so stay tuned. <laughs> 
حصل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي يا سامع الصوت صل على الرسول وعلى ابو الحسني علي زوج البتول وان كان ما تعرف تغرد وتقول كثر صلاتك على الهادي النبي كثر صلاتك على الهادي النبي الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي يا سامع الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي صلوا على احمد ختم المرسلين وعلى ابن عمه وال الطاهرين يعود علينا وكل الحاضرين نحتفل كل عام ميلاد النبي نحتفل كل عام ميلاد النبي الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن علي علي سامع الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي عرج نبينا لعد سابع سما شاهد الجنات وهلهم نعمة شاهد النيران بهلهم مضرمة تحرق الظلمة وعلي وآل النبي تحرق الظلمة وعلي وآل النبي الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي يا سلام الصوت صل على النبي اول محمد وابن عم علي على الرجل هادي على هدوة الليل سافر جبريل الى هادي ودليل دفعت جوز ويلكم باك هوب ان شاء الله انجويد دوز اكسكلوسيف فيديو فوتج فروم the holy city of Kalamiya, the holy shrine of Imam al-Jawad and his grandfather, Imam Musa al-Kazim. Once again, I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you on this auspicious occasion. But back to the discussion with my dear guest, uh, Sayyid Ja'far al-Qazwini. Welcome back, Hayu Sayyidna. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, before the episode, we did discuss uh, 1400 years uh, of what the Imam السلام, went through and uh, how did Al Ma'moon offer his daughter, and what were the reasons of him offering his daughter uh, for the marriage of Imam Muhammad al Jawad? But we want to jump generations, Sayyidina, we want to jump centuries of where we, where we stand today as youth. I know you're, you're, you're a youth yourself, um, and uh, you know, no, 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 you're not that old. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, you know, Imam al Jawad and Ahl Bayt, but especially Imam al Jawad, because he is, uh, if you will, uh, the second Imam to receive Imam at such a young age. So he would kind of influence us m not more than the Ahlul Bayt, but he would he has directly influenced us because he has different attributes or similar attributes to Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. But how does Imam Al Jawad alayhi salam his his character, his attribute, his merits, how do they influence us and how do they and how does he become a role model to us in our youth today? You see, one beauty of the infallibles mm -hmm. of the prophets and messengers of God yes. is for the fact that they will be a role model for others. Yes. You see, the ayah is very clear, the verse. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسْوَةٌ حَسَنٍ yes. In the Prophet, peace be upon him, the best role model, a model that for you is to emulate and to follow. Why is it so? In the eyes of many, including the youth, the younger generation, is that life is a rosy thing, is mm -hmm. beautiful. It's full of um, beauties, yes. uh, wonderful things, mm -hmm. amenities, enjoyment, yes. leisure, pleasure, and, and you name it. Mm -hmm. That's in our you know, fairy tale mind yeah. when, when we think of, of life. But the reality tells otherwise. Yeah. Reality tells you that there is nothing as hard as life itself. Yeah. In fact, the most difficult thing that people get to see is the real life, yeah. not in the classroom, not in the factory, rather the reality of the life. This is the most difficult you know, thing that any human being faces. Let me go, go back to one ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Balad. It says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وَأَنْتَ حِلٌ بِهَذَا الْوَلَدِ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ وَوَالِدٍ وَمَا وَلَدْ 
لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد The Almighty swears says there is no need for me to swear by this holy place which is Mecca nor the fact that you are hell you are entitled to do anything in Mecca for one fact he, he uses these introductions and is swearing to say this لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created a human being in distress wow. that there is a pressure everywhere yeah. there is distress everywhere there is difficulty and challenge everywhere this is how the life of a human being يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ You are striving your life is full of striving so full of fight full of a struggle this is the nature of life yes one day they ask al imam al-sadiq alayhi salam if i can catch that phrase um you know rightly yes it says the imam says tatamanna wal raha wal raha tu fil jannah yes all of you you are seeking leisure and you are seeking the the resting and enjoying self but you do not get to see this in this life mm -hmm. rather you will see it in the hereafter hereafter i mean uh, to go along with that uh jibrail also tells prophet muhammad uh, oh muhammad you know tell your nation tell your ummah that i have created something <coughs> that people are searching for which is raha which is uh, you know comfort to 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 to, uh, to have comfort w within their life their daily life but yet, they will never find it. That thing I created is in heaven. You know, because if, if you legit want to find comfort, you cannot find it anywhere. In your house, you're thinking of your business. You're thinking of work. You're thinking of what are you going to get for your family today, tomorrow, the next month, the next year. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So every single day, you're occupied with, with distress. You're occupied with, with you know, uh, a different mentality every day because you, you don't know what's, what goes on. But if you want to go back to uh, Imam al-Jawad and his marriage, why is it crucial uh, and why is marriage at an early age uh, reflect positively uh, on the family and on the couple when they get married at a young age? Sure. Let me finish up just the sentence before and then we'll catch, catch, Allah, ca ca catch this one. So the, the general perception is that this life is full of enjoyment and we need to uh, take advantage of it. Yes, we need to take advantage of it. But this is not a place for leisure. This is not that you will seek um, you know, welfare. This place is, is, is very hard, very difficult. Therefore, you need to achieve it. You need to earn it with your hard work. Definitely. There is nothing called ease of life. Therefore, the Almighty, out of his blessings and mercy, he created individuals like Ahlul Bayt to show us, to see we, as a human, we can see their lifestyle. We can see the agonies that they went through, the troubles that they went through, the struggles that they None of Ahl al-Bayt die by himself. All of them have been martyred, mm -hmm. have been killed. Didn't they know that where they will be killed? Imam Hussein alayhi salam, didn't he know that if he take the path that he took would lead him to death? Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Why did he take it? For what reason? To tell us that sometimes you need to earn what you desire with fight. You need to earn by it with a struggle, by sacrifice. You need to sacrifice yourself for it in order to reach that position. This is a beautiful thing that we emulate, we learn from. Coming to Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam. The Imams alayhi salam, sometimes they give us piece of adv advice by words. Mm -hmm. But most of the time they give us this piece of advice through their action, their yes. lifestyle. Look at the Imam. Al-Imam al-Jawad at age of eight or seven, he traveled from Medina to Khurasan. 
is some about some 2,000 kilometers away or even yeah, more. More, more. It's, it could be more, 2,000, yeah. 3,000 kilometers away from Medina all the way to Khurasan by himself at age seven and eight. Look how he faced the challenges with a brutal enemy, a murderer that he killed his beloved father. An environment that is so hostile to him and to Ahlul Bayt. An environment that are all full of, you know, ranking officials, very arrogant, very self-centric, only thinking of themselves. Then someone at age eight enters the court, enters this environment. How can he handle himself? Many people lose themselves. If we are taken to the, for example, to the court of the king with such majestic view and majestic status with so much wealth, power, and knowledge at the same time, many people lose themselves. Yeah. They fail. They cannot you know, face such kind of challenge. But you see the Imam السلام, very calmly, very calm, decently, he sat down with Al Khalifa and debated, debated with the scholars. It is narrated that in these days that the Imam was in the court of Al Ma'mun, he answered more than 30,000 questions. Wow. 30,000 wow. questions. He never said that I am an orphan, that I am lonely. I came from Medina, I don't have family, I don't have a tribe, I'm weak. No. Rather, he presented himself in the most difficult, in the most dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. So, What we, does that tell the So the we, we can learn from that, that there is no obstacle in life that a human being cannot overcome. Absolutely. This, this message goes to, toward the youth. Mm -hmm. There are so many of the youth he would tell you, life is so difficult, study is difficult. What have you seen in life? I cannot find, you know, my desired job. I cannot find my desired spouse. I can't have my own home, the car that I've been dreaming about, and things like that. Then what should things. I do? Then what should I? Should I go and take refuge in the, in the West and sit there and get money uh -huh. and, 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 and lose my identity, lose myself? The lifestyle of Imam al-Jawad tells you no. If you have a belief in yourself, if you have an objective view of the life, that life doesn't go without a challenge, oh, yeah. that there is difficulty, there is hardship, and you have to face these challenges. You see, sometimes pain, difficulty, are the essence of life, the Definitely. beauty of the life. Discipline is, is... How many delicious foods we end up to eat? If we wouldn't feel hungry, would we bother to go and cook those delicious foods? At what time you end up enjoying the delicious food? When is hungry. when your stomach is empty and you feel hungry. If your stomach wouldn't feel hungry, if you wouldn't feel hungry, would you bother to eat? You wouldn't see the other beautiful side of life if you are not in the hardship. If you are not in the bottom of the wave, you wouldn't reach the top of the wave. Therefore, life is always full of difficulties, full of challenges. What we need to learn from the lifestyle of Imam Al-Jawad al al mm -hmm. is how he faced these challenges. One other message. Of course, this applies to Al Imam yes. when he got married at age of eight or nine. Why did he get married at age eight of nine? And, and none. And none. First of all, to prove to the opposite side, to the opponents, that he's a mature man. He's not a child. He's someone who can take a responsibility of a family and can, you know, with merits, with capacity, with a qualification, get married to the daughter of the king. Wow. And he's very well qualified for that. Very well qualified. So number one is an answer to the challenge that they have posed. Second, Although not very expressively, he's saying. You see, Brother Ahmed, mm -hmm. when we enter life yes. as mature people, the first thing that we have obstacle with and challenge with is communication with others. Yes. How I would communicate with you 
still be friend with you. We can differ. We can differ on taste. We can differ on opinions. We can differ on the practices. Yet we can cooperate. Yes. We can live in harmony. When do we start to experience this? Through marital life. Is when I get married with someone who doesn't share my taste. He doesn't share, she doesn't share my worldviews sometimes. Doesn't share, and sometimes my, even my ideologies. Yeah, your beliefs. Therefore, how do I co-op and work it out yes. with this person? Mm -hmm. If I can manage having a peaceful life with this person who's different than me in thoughts, in taste, in attitudes, in demeanors, then definitely I can make friends with others. Definitely. I can cooperate with others. Definitely. You see, the beauty of life is to gain more confidence, to gain more friendship, not to create hostility and, and, and hostile people. Yes. How do you end up getting more friends? Mm -hmm. Is that when you learn how to cooperate with them. Yes. Number one, the nuclear society that we create is the family. Therefore, Islam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Imams have taught us that start this at an early age, at an early life. Don't say I have not finished high school yet. Don't say I have not finished university yet. Don't say that I haven't found the suitable job yet. Those, you can seek those for years and they never come. Therefore, it's to start with this single nuclear society that is called a family. Mm -hmm. So that's a practical message of the Imam alayhi salam, is that marriage is no joke. Marriage is a serious thing. It's, mm -hmm. a seri it's a holy life. Yes. It's a sanctuary. Yet you need to start. You need to look forward for that beautiful community that mm -hmm. you will create. And because you, if you get to understand yes. each other, then you can move on Definitely. and you can make understanding with others. And here you can create a civil society. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, with that, the person who's uh, about to get married, they need to uh, be fully aware of their capabilities. I mean, uh, when someone wants to go get married, I mean, you, you have been married for a very long time. Uh, I know that uh, in marriage, there are difficult situations. And some uh, kind of, uh, you know, they get frustrated and they think, oh, it's the end and I can't live with this person anymore for, you know, uh, minor stuff that, that, that goes on in, in, in the family, um, which Ahlul Bayt salam, have given us solutions to. And uh, just to conclude the episode, we have, I think, a couple of minutes. Yes, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, uh, can we, you know, just summarize uh, answers of Ahlul Bayt to common challenges uh, with our life? Just, I think, two or three minutes, if you can uh, conclude with that. I know it's not, it's not enough. Probably is not going to be enough. But yeah. when you see for every single situation, mm -hmm. Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam pose a model. Yes. When it comes to the trade, making business, you see there are multiple stories of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam with his followers. Mm -hmm. Teach them how to address themselves, how to handle themselves in order to become successful businessmen, for example. A man came to the Imam and told him that my business is, 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 is ruined. I'm losing. I'm going bankrupt. What should I do? The Imam looked at him and told him, why don't you clip your nail and fix your, at, you know, your, your, your attire? You know, you need to look sharp. You are in, 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 in a situation where people will look at you. Yes. You are, you, you, you are where, where people's eyes are on you. Therefore, your physical appearance matters. Mm -hmm. For example, you go to the restaurant and you, sh you see the attire of the chef is very dirty. Are Would you willing eat? to eat in that no. restaurant? No. Definitely not. Why? Because the criteria is the cleanliness yes. of the food. So when the chef looks sharp and clean and nice and immaculate, you will have more tendency to go to that restaurant. Yes. And of course, that business will pick up. Definitely. So the Imams alayhi, alayhi, always would give a practical advice to people. For example, the Imam alayhi salam, here, al-Imam al-Jawad, al just one, one point. Yes. It says, 
لو سكت الجاهل ما اختلف الناس if for one moment the ignorant the 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 person who the uneducated keeps his mouth silent people wouldn't you know disagree again mm -hmm. where does the disagreement comes when someone says some something that is not oh, right blue, and people will fight between themselves yeah. right at the time of the departure of the prophet mm -hmm. when the prophet wanted to tell his nation that get me an ink and paper so i write to you something that will make you successful for the rest of your life for the rest of centuries an ignorant person came to say hasbuna kitab allah no, no this we have only you know the book of allah mm -hmm. that has created this quarrel and fight until, until today. today why because someone who was not educated spoken Definitely. so this is another practic practical advice mm -hmm. of ahl al-bayt mm -hmm. to the humanity thank you very much we'll leave it there uh, i know we have uh, went to a different topic but still that does relate to uh, our challenges and our problems today but i would like to thank you very much uh Sayyidina, for joining us uh, over the past two episodes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and grant you all your wishes on this blessed occasion. Uh, thank, thank you very you much, much, respected viewers, for joining us tonight, uh, as well as may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also bless you on this auspicious occasion. And also, if you didn't get the chance to view yesterday's episode or today's episode, you can log into our YouTube channel or check, it, uh, check out our Facebook page at Imam Hussein 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Allah and congratulations to you. Congratulations to you as well.